Although the Sakura Wars franchise has been insanely popular in Japan for nearly 25 years, since the era of the Sega Saturn, it's a property that has gone largely unnoticed in the West. Prior to this year, five major Sakura Wars games have been released on mainline consoles, but only the fifth in the franchise had ever been localized into English. And that probably wouldn't be my first choice if you were to ask me which Sakura Wars game you should start with. But now, Sega has released an entirely new Sakura Wars game in the West with a great English localization, and after having played it all the way through, this might just be the right game to introduce you to this universe. Shin Sakura Taisen was released on the PlayStation 4 at the end of 2019 in Japan and has been branded internationally simply as Sakura Wars for its English release in 2020. There's a very specific type of person who will probably be interested in Sakura Wars, and that person is probably already an anime fan. The franchise is deeply rooted in a history of being part visual novel, part dating simulator, and part tactical RPG. For this most recent release, now that the game is in a fully 3D environment, it feels a little less like a visual novel, and more like you're watching and interacting with a fully animated anime series. The battle mechanics have now transitioned from tactical RPG to action RPG, which probably helped make it a better candidate for English localization. Sega is really pushing for the idea that this Sakura Wars is a soft reboot rather than a direct sequel. And to a point that is indeed true, I found that it was very easy to just jump right into with little explanation of the games that came before it. However, as someone who has played previous Sakura Wars games, I also can't completely say that it isn't a sequel to those older titles. This game will occasionally give you some sweeping backstory about older characters and events that happened prior to this game. And while you don't need to know anything about those events, it's definitely an exciting treat for anybody who has. Taking place in an alternate 1940, you play as Seijuro Kamiyama, a former Navy captain who has been assigned to be the leader of the all-female floral assault team, whose base of operations is a theater, and whose team members all perform in the theater's musical performances. When demons begin to attack the city, you and your teammates jump into your giant steam and soul-powered mechs known as Kobu, oftentimes also called Spiracle Armor, and mow down the demonic onslaught. You'll have five different women in your team, and it's important that you're nice and even somewhat romantic with all five of them, as raising their affections also improves how well they'll work with you once you finally get into a battle. The LIPS system, short for Live and interactive picture system has been a long time staple of the franchise, in which you only have a short amount of time to choose among three different dialogue options. Oftentimes, those choices result in increasing your bond, decreasing it, or sometimes even just being neutral and making no change one way or the other. Although the negative options will usually result in an amusing cutscene, if this is your first time playing the game, you may want to avoid negative choices as often as possible if you want to have strong teammates in battle. Sakura Wars is an extremely narrative-heavy game. It was something I expected as a longtime fan of the franchise, but newer players should definitely be aware that you're going to be running around and doing a lot of talking to other characters, watching a lot of character development, and interacting sparingly with the environment in order to move the plot forward. This largely stems from Sakura Wars' previous history as a visual novel experience, so be ready to have combat be secondary to story. However, there are plenty of other little tasks to keep you busy throughout the game. You'll be able to collect bromides, that is, photographs of your teammates that have been a collectible staple of the Imperial Theater since the franchise's inception. In this game, you collect images not only of your current teammates, but of teammates from other cities across the world that you'll meet, as well as teams from previous games, making it a touching reminder of the games that came before it. You'll also be able to play the traditional Japanese card game Koi Koi, played using the Japanese playing cards known as Hanafuda cards. And as you continue playing, you'll unlock new characters to play against, increasing in difficulty. Koi Koi as a concept isn't too difficult, but will absolutely take some getting used to for anyone who isn't 
familiar with this traditional game. At a certain point, battle training missions will begin to open up, in which you can replay the battles from previous missions, which will not only improve your bond with your individual teammates, but will also earn you more bromides to collect. I wanted so much to collect all the bromides, but being expected to do the dozens of training missions seemed repetitive and tedious, as you will need to play one stage six different times to take each different partner through the stage. And at a certain point near the end of the game, I finally just stopped doing them. As far as battle itself is concerned, it's one that is simple to learn, more complicated to master, and I mostly enjoyed it. There's no guard button, as the game largely expects you to really get in close and get aggressive. You'll be able to boost to move far and fast in quick bursts, or if you really don't want to be hit, it is possible to dodge. Attacks come in circle and triangle combinations, and when your spirit meter fills, you can then perform an extra powerful and impressive ability that's sure to wipe out most tougher enemies. Very fun to play, very cool to watch. What may not really be fair in this review is that I received this game before the first patch could come out, which promises the inclusion of a targeting system. While that patch is supposed to be included sometime close to the day of release, not having it was often very frustrating, particularly for flying enemies, as I oftentimes found it difficult to find those enemies visually, and jumping for them was almost always inaccurate, either not quite getting close enough due to not really being able to visualize the depth between myself and the enemy, or because sometimes I would just jump way too high above the enemy and miss entirely. If this patch is released soon, I can guarantee that this gripe will no longer be an issue. It's a little disappointing that you never have all five teammates out on the field with you at once. Most of the time, it's limited to a two-person party, often with the members dictated by the story. The good news is that each of the women are unique enough to one another and mostly fun to play as. The titular character of Sakura uses traditional swordsmanship, Azami uses some cool-looking ninjutsu, Claris uses long-distance magic, and my favorite girl Hatsuho uses an awesome giant flaming hammer. However, it was especially clear that Anastasia was the clear winner out of which character was easiest to use and dominate the field. Using a variety of projectile weapons, she was easily able to shoot down flying enemies and even take out smaller enemies with far more speed and power than her other teammates. Not to mention she has a parasol that allows her to float after jumping, giving an extra dynamic to battle. It made it incredibly difficult not to choose her to join my battles every time the game gave me the option. The DLC available is cosmetic and does not affect gameplay, but players may be interested in the costume packs that will dress your team up as characters from previous Sakura Wars titles, as well as music packs that replace the soundtrack with those from the previous games. The art and music all complement the story wonderfully and help make the game truly feel like the perfect addition to this franchise. The main characters were all designed by Tait Kubo, creator of Bleach, with guest character designs from multiple artists including Ken Sugimori of Pokemon fame and Shigenori Soejima, who has been the longtime character designer for the Persona franchise. The music is once again composed by Kohei Tanaka, known largely for his compositions for One Piece, but who was also the composer for the original Sakura Wars game from 1996, and so the soundtrack truly felt like coming home to something old, familiar, and comfortable. Each piece is fully orchestrated and perfectly fits the mood of every scene. The localization only features a Japanese dub with English subtitles, but it's what I expected as Sakura Wars hasn't yet made a big enough splash in the United States to likely warrant spending the money on an English cast. But the Japanese actors are all so different and emotive that I think most players aren't going to mind that they'll be doing a lot of reading. As for the translation, it's definitely a localization, rather than a one-to-one -one literal translation. If you ask me, that's not a problem. The localization is always conveying the same feeling as the original Japanese language, so you'll never misunderstand the true meaning of what the game was trying to convey, but I think that some really strict language 
language purists might get mad that some of the sentences aren't totally identical to what's originally being stated. I'm personally not in that camp, as I don't feel that the true meaning or feeling of anything in the story has changed. In fact, I thought the story was great, nuanced, and really fun and engaging. As this is a very female-focused cast of characters, despite it being something of a romantic visual novel, the women are all actually quite unique and well-written, even though some of the character designs are obviously meant to be visually enticing. I genuinely enjoyed getting to know each character, why they do what they do, and how they came to be at the Imperial Theater. Despite minor complaints about the battle system, which will probably be fixed with the patch, and despite feeling like the training area is a bit of a grind, I loved Sakura Wars. It's everything I could have hoped that a modern addition to the franchise would be. It feels like a traditional Sakura Wars game without being held back by older game technology and mechanics. The story is engaging, the characters are likable, the music and visuals are pleasing to the eyes and ears, and even the majority of the battles are pretty fun. And while there's currently no legal way to play a localized version, of four of the five previous games, Sakura Wars for the PlayStation 4 makes for a great entry point into the franchise. And who knows, with a little bit of extra support, maybe Sega will see an audience exists that might be interested in some of those older games too. For now, I'll be going back and replaying the game with its New Game Plus feature, and following it up by watching the currently airing anime that takes place after the events of the game. Thank you to everyone for watching this video. If this is something you enjoyed, feel free to hit like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to stay notified on future video content. Thanks for listening. This has been Mars Girl, and for more on Sakura Wars and more things gaming, keep it here on Game Explained.